Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inner Brews. We're here at Grove Studios where you can get all your artist needs accomplished. We have rooms everywhere here where you can do band practice, do live shows. If you want to do a podcast, hey, that's what we're doing here. Today, we're going to have a Michigan brew with a Michigan artist. And today, my beer is the New Holland, the Poet, an American oatmeal stout, my fabies. And our artist today is the powerful Ryan Hampton. What's up? What's up, buddy? Shit. Feeling good? Yeah. All right. Sure. Right. Loosen up, baby. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been, I mean, you're the person I know that toured the most. Yeah. You've been playing music since I've been in trainers. Sure. You know? Yeah. When does it start? What age are you? How do you get your uh, start in this? You mean like uh, playing in bands and shit? Or, no, I'm uh, talking about like when was the first inclination that you were going to be a uh, musician? I started, I started playing drums when I was about four or five years old because my uncle Neil was a drummer and uh, he, he was like the cool uncle. So I wanted to be just like him. Uncle Neil, right on. Yeah. And like, were, was it pots and pans or did he bust oh, out yeah, the drum my, set? Motley crew on pots and pans, man. <laughs> Motley yeah. crew on yeah. pots and pans. Yeah. The whole reason I wore this, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Uh, did uh, w did he introduce you to the drum set too? Like give yeah, you the sticks and yep. the hands? And yeah, he gave me my first set of sticks and uh, he, his kit was the first kit I ever played on. And uh, then he gave me a kit for a little while that was his drum instructors and I beat the shit out of that, but, which I felt bad about later because <laughs> it was a vintage Ludwig kit and it was really expensive. <laughs> so but, as you got older, you're all like, had a little bit more respect for that kit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I still beat the shit out of drums, but like have a little more respect for them. Yeah. <laughs> right on, <laughs> but they're meant to be disrespected. They're fucking drums. You I mean, you beat them. Like, yeah. that's the whole point. Exactly. It's the best way to get your aggression out as a musician. Sure. Really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was your influences back then? Was it only Motley Crue? Or were you... No, I mean, it was uh, everything from Motley Crue to, well, Metallica. Metallica, obviously. right on. The black, uh, fucking... The Black and, CD? No, uh, and Justice for All. Okay. And then and then I went back to, after Injustice for All, I discovered Master Puppets and then discovered the Black Album. And that shit changed my life for sure. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Lars Ulrich is like, <laughs> as cliche as it might sound. Yeah, like no, no, no. He is the butt of every musician's joke, but dude, <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. dude deserves his respect. Motherfucker got down in one of the yeah. most yeah. prolific metal bands out there. I mean, real. For sure. Game respect game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what about the guitar? When does this enter the picture? Because I started playing guitar when I was about 14 because I would be playing my drums and watching the guitar player. And then I realized like I can play guitar and then mm. I got better than all the guitar players that I was <laughs> playing with. <laughs> so yeah, I just started doing that and then trying to actually get in bands playing that. And that's a, yeah, that's where that came from. Where was your first band? Uh, my, fir my first band ever. First band ever. Nobody's Heroes. <laughs> Nobody's Heroes. Yeah. I know this band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we talked about this. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <clears throat> this is actually the first band that you've been in, and also the first band that just so happenly gets signed. Yeah, we got signed. We were together for about two years. That's got, fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it wasn't nothing huge or whatever, but it was, you know, kind of crazy that someone else wanted to pay to put our record out, you know? Bro, I mean, like, like to our, our circle and, like, you know, even Michigan artists alone, being how old were you at the time? 15. 15. Yeah. Getting signed into a band, being the first band you were in. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking insane. And you're not and you're not playing the instrument that you started off in becoming a musician. No, I played drums as Nobody's Heroes. Oh, you played drums in Nobody's yep. Heroes? Yeah, I did. Really? Yep. Okay, so you're playing drums in Nobody's Heroes. You're going on a tour. What's your parents thinking of you going on tour at this time? Well, they weren't like huge tours, man. They were like uh, for, like weekends and then like four or five day stuff and shit like that. Mainly regional, like Ohio, Indiana, okay. Tri-state area kind of. And main, a lot of Canada shit, too. Really? You went out to, yeah. you had to get the passport or anything? No, or dude. We, I was using my birth certificate and my school ID <laughs> to get across the yes. border. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Any uh, favorite shows? I mean, like, come on, man. Going to Canada, playing your music. In that band? Yeah. Um, Shit, man. That was so long ago. I can't right, even remember. Right, right. The Canada shows were, were awesome. All of them were awesome. They have, like, a raging scene up there. Well, they did. I don't know about it anymore. But 
Yeah, I mean, punk punk scene up there was pretty for sure, thick for in sure. Toronto, yeah, and uh, not to mention like uh, your catalog. I, I found uh, what was it? Uh, was it coffins Co- and graves? Coats and corpses. Coats and corpses. <laughs> yeah, I, I found like, your I found your shit on co- corpses. Pretty and bad, ain't it? And I had to <laughs> dig deep, bro. Like I had to find through the grapevine. I I mean, I dug up some FC metal. Old school architects mm. to find that kind of music, man. It's pretty and, bad. Oh no, it was perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> I was like, when when I found out what time or, or like what period it was, I was like, that is so insane. Especially because I know that you. Was it was like nineteen ninety eight, yeah, ninety nine, yeah. 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 And I mean, like, I know you from being. Like, I was a freshman in high school, I think. Yeah. In one amazing metal band, and then awesome fucking bands after that, and then right. to hear you in that band be your first. <laughs> Dude, it, it was yeah. what a perfect story. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you got the record deal. Um, what what like starts uh, ending the band? Like what? what? Uh, well, I started playing like getting over playing drums so much and wanted to play guitar. And Friction was another band that we played with a lot. And, yeah. And they would go through uh, guitar players like you know fucking just trying to find yeah. the right yeah. person in there. And then it just I just got the chance to play with him. I actually played my last show with Nobody's Heroes and my first show with Friction on the same night. So what was the transition from like what was the drive from being like I'm tired of being behind everybody? Well it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't necessarily that so much, but like I guess I could say, yeah, drummers, drummers aren't seen. Fuck yeah, that. right, right, right. And, um, like, your talent, you already said that. I wanted to write. I wanted to be, like, a part of the writing process. Is it band. hard writing in, in a band as a drummer? No, I mean, it depends on who you're in a band with. Like, okay. I, I would honestly write songs in Nobody's Heroes, but then I'd have to, you know, go play the drums to them, you know? Right, right. And But we all wrote, you know? But I wanted to be, like, the guy who played what he wrote on guitar, you know? For sure, for sure. So, uh... <clears throat> So it sounds like Friction was the next band you joined. Yep. How was it transition, uh, transitioning into that band? Easy, man. Yeah. I already knew them. We were all already cool. I actually filled in one show for them now that I think about it on drums. Before before I got in touched the, band. the guitar. No shit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we we all knew each other. We were all friends from mugs and, you know, all that shit. So it was easy. Yeah. But they were much more professional. And I, yeah. You know, I was. An adjustment, sure. Yeah. More more straightforward, trying yeah. to get to the fucking point. Yep. Did Friction get signed too? Yes. They did too? Well, no, Friction actually released their own shit. Um, so they went independent? We didn't, we didn't get signed until we were Bloodline Calligraphy. Okay, okay. So the Friction turned into Bloodline. Yeah, Friction turned into Bloodline. How, how amazing is it that, like, you're around the scene, you're in the music industry in, in Michigan, and, like, sometimes Bloodline's not even talked about. Ah, it's... It fine. drives me insane. Yeah, it's fine, dude. Dude, sometimes I mean, we're a metal band, and this and like it seems like a the whole Ipsy scene is like I don't know, not geared towards that so much anymore. We don't. That's have, true. We don't that's have true. The venues we used to have to, to bring in acts like we used to be able to. Right. So. I it mean, doesn't bother me but, at all, man. Like, but we, even we, back then, though, like our market was in other places, much much fucking better than it was ever in Michigan. Right. Right. I mean, you guys got signed, and you guys went on tour, yeah, forever. like fairly quickly, right? Yep. Well, we got uh, our first record, "Say Hi to the Bad Guy," as Blood right. Calligraphy. We got signed to a small label called Sela, and we we did a handful of tours. But we, looking back on them, we started calling them vacations sprinkled with shows. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, because you're going to all these places. Because yeah, once we uh, put out fucking, uh, they want you silent with face down. That was real tour. Yeah. Yeah, that was Was it like back to back shows then? Yeah, every night. 30, every night. Thirty fucking shows in thirty days. Oh my god. Go home for two weeks, go back out. And you're playing shows, guitar in days. this, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
dude, how fucking your fingers didn't bleed playing all that shit? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. Yeah, right on. You got, got a favorite? shape, though, man. Playing playing that. For sure. Fast, all that shit that many times. Yeah. Like, uh, you can't be a month. couch potato playing fucking tours like that. No. Hell no. No. Uh, so, what's your, like, I mean, there's so much shit I want to talk about Bloodline. What's your favorite show? Do you got a favorite show? Uh, I think the first time we played the Showcase Theater in California. Is, yeah? Is my favorite show, yeah. There's nothing fucking sweeter than a 400 capacity venue having 900 fucking people in it and them all going nuts. Right. And there's no barricade. No barricade. Yeah. Straight up against the stage. Yep. Faces yeah. to faces. Head walking and fucking stage dive. Oh my. <laughs> God. Yeah, knocking your gear over and shit and just raging. Fucking raging. Yeah. Real raging. Yeah. Now, uh, we you mentioned that we spoke beforehand, and I got a little note that says, flat out, Tupelo, Mississippi show. I know. I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain about what that's. I remember you talking about it. Is it's First off, it's the birthplace of fucking Elvis, Elvis himself. Yeah. You said nobody went harder than oh, Tupelo, oh, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, those guys went, those guys went nuts. Went nuts every time we played there. They would like pay us. Well, I don't want to say the number because that's fucking. Re- yeah, no, no, no. But they would pay us well a amount. lot. They well amount. Just to come down on a one off and fucking come out in droves, man. Get the fuck out of here, yeah. dude. I would never we, have thought that. You would never either. think of that. Me either. Like maybe some like uh, rock and roll uh, country music, but not fucking the metal you guys were playing at the time. Right. That was some hardcore shit yeah. and fucking having the. Mm. Yeah, they thought we were fucking Motley Crue, man. Fucking right, dude, <laughs> for real. So, uh, what about favorite song? If heaven ain't a lot like Gypsy, I don't want to uh. go. My man, I knew that was gonna be it. Is that on the Ipsy Atlanta album? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's another reason why it's like, especially in this city, if you don't know the band, I mean, they named their album after <laughs> right. our home. Right. You got to throw some fucking respect on the name. <laughs> I know, more, it's all good, man. You're fucking, we're not everybody's cup of tea around here. So. I mean, I feel that. I feel that. Um, <coughs> I feel like you guys are like the most, most unknown known in Ypsilanti. Probably. Like the forefathers of a lot of fucking, like, especially my band. We look to you and like the Helen Kellers that pretty much were influenced by your band. Right on. You know, the, the Ipsy Metal name has a big tie to Bloodline Calligraphy. And like, uh, dude, we got to do that documentary. <laughs> we got to do that doc. We got to do a docu-series or whatever to get that story out. Um, so do you go from being in Face Down Records, what breaks down, you know, what dissipates from the band? Like... When well, you guys decide to break apart, we didn't decide to break. Up. Well, we did, but it, it was in the middle of recording the what was supposed to follow it's landing when, mm-hmm. when Eric passed away. We just uh, right, right. I mean, uh, kind of took the wind out of my. Sales. A lot of bands yeah. too. A lot of bands too, because there was other bands uh, tied with those groups. Like uh, I remember, like Apex Predator, right? Apex like, Predator and Eric did Proof Positive. Yeah, where he DJ and shit, and yeah. It, I mean, like uh, the the man's talent. An impact on the scene definitely hit hard. Oh, right. So yeah, yeah, he he's the dude. Yeah, he was the he was the champion for sure. Mm-hmm. Barely, I barely knew the guy. Met him a couple times. Um, was gracious enough to attend the funeral, and you could tell that there was a bunch oh. of family there. There was a bunch of family there. Yeah, that was hard. It was a lot <laughs> hard. And then, uh, so do you go into your next group uh, as Lawless Carver or? Started Lawless Carver after that with um, two, a dude I went to high school with who I played with in Nobody's Heroes and the and the bass player from Nobody's Heroes. Oh, so you're bringing back from the beginning, like your 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 first start. Yeah, but it's you know obviously Lawless Carver is like way. way I mean, dude, different. definitely yeah. definitely different caliber. Yeah, I feel like uh, all that time you guys weren't together, 
all it was fine tuning your craft. Oh yeah, we, I mean we jammed together like casually while the whole time I was in Bloodline, you know, like, and we wrote like a bunch of songs. Like, there's a couple songs that Lawless Carver plays that we wrote when we we called ourselves Black Market Surgery. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good name. Yeah, Damn. I know. That's, I've got to use that one again sometimes. Yeah, you got to bring that one up. <laughs> Black Market Surgery. That's so good. And uh, we never did anything. We just jammed and fucking recorded on a four track in Hunter's Garage. And no shit. Then when like when Bloodline was no more, when I wasn't doing Bloodline full time anymore, I had the time to get back with those guys. And then we got Adam to come play with us and Dustin to play right. keyboards. And it was really dope. Fucking, I mean, some of your uh, best music, I say, is it comes out of that Lawless Carver band. That's just some of the best drumming I've ever done. On Amazing record. shit, man. Yeah, I, I'm proud of that shit. Yeah, so. for sure. You should be because, like, you know, you were in the front uh, front limelight, as you say, as a, as a guitarist. You finally yeah. got behind, you know, in front of everybody versus being behind. Yeah. Um, were you playing drums at that time uh, while you were still, you know, playing the guitar? Yeah, I actually did. I, I when did you a, came into had, Lawless, it felt like... You I were had, seasoned as fuck. Oh, I never stopped. Like, oh, I never never lost it. I guess. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I actually had to do a tour. You know, now that you bring that up, I had to do a tour with Bloodline playing drums. When after Cart's dad passed away, he couldn't do a couple tours. So. No shit. So we went out as a four piece, and I played drums as Bloodline. Yeah. yeah. No shit. I did not know that. Yeah. What a fucking fact. Yeah, that was actually cool because I got. To, I never got to play like huge yeah. shows behind the kit, you know, until. That so that was sweet. Yeah, fuck it. Sounds amazing to the fucking like and, and like the just to you know you know blow you a little bit. The, the <laughs> fact that the fact that you can transfer from the guitar to take on that such a big role, a lot of shoes to fill. You know what I mean? Oh man, I, when when we write songs, I always already have the drums in my head. I already know what they're. Supposed I mean, to it's sound what like. you started out as. So right, it's like, like second nature at that point. Yeah, it's it's I, I can't stop it. Like it's, it's just inherent. Like I know what the drums are supposed to be doing. And sometimes I get frustrated when the drummer doesn't do that. But, yeah, right. But also, right. Anticipate you know, this. You're right, right. <laughs> but you got to let everybody do their thing, you know? No, and for sometimes sure. sometimes, you know, the sauce gets a little richer when they do their own thing, you know? It's true. It's true. When they add a little extra spice, I mean, yeah. basil goes a long way, baby. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> uh, so do you got a favorite song in Lawless Carver? Because I got tons. Ooh, I think my favorite song in Lawless Carver is I Need My Arms. That's where my hands live. What a great song for a drummer, too. I love that song. <laughs> we, we wrote that song as Black Market Surgery. Like, oh, really? In, like, 2002. And you just brought it back in then? Yeah. That's fucking when, sick, when, dude. When Adam joined, he put, like, he thick into the sauce. You know what I'm saying? As, 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 as Sam would say, added his own razzle-dazzle. Like, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. He put some fucking hot spices on it. Right the fuck on. So how long do you play in Lawless before you... Uh, a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years? Yeah. And is, like... And I, I talk about the band because we never really got to see the full fledge of it. Mm. Decade of Flies. Decade of Flies had super duper potential. Like, Dude, it was going to be a sure hit. Yeah, I know. I, but shit happens. I don't, I don't mean to bring up rough stuff, but like <laughs> what an epic crew of people to play in a band. That was a good lineup. Can we can we talk about the members in it? I mean, like you sure had some fucking serious heavy hitters. Go ahead. Sean from fucking Bloodline, who played mm. with me in Bloodline on guitar. I was playing drums in that band. And Richard Hilton. A.K.A. Dickie. And, Dickie. And the fucking Wizard of Oz, Tony Davidson. <laughs> the great Davis. goat himself. Dude, <clears throat> it was such a sick-ass idea. I really wish it fucking, like, yeah. struck for the stars. Yeah, I wish we could have kept it together, but 
Shit happens. happens. I mean, shit happens, happens man. man. But man, damn, a, a marriage the between two, the marriage between two people is hard enough to keep together, man. When you got four, four, five, five, it's even harder. <laughs> Bands are hard. So, like, like, give a shout out to everybody out here trying to start a band. <laughs> what What does it take to make a good band? Mm. Do you go in it thinking like this is a relationship? Well, I don't know. It depends on what you're after. I, I don't like playing with people I don't like. Okay, you know. If you already don't agree with somebody, you can't. If you're just a gigging musician, then join a band. But mm -hmm. if you want to have a good time with your buds and fucking make something, then, you know, find good friends that... Like to jam with? That you like to jam with and have the same goals as you and try and stick to your guns. I remember a quote that you said when we tried to do this last time. Uh, I asked what makes a great uh, artist, like what makes you be a great musician. And you said, nerves... And nervousness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, and I always took that as, like, having the balls to do it, but being okay to be scared about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no way you're going to put yourself in front of a crowd of people and not, <clears throat> unless you're, I don't know, made of steel. Right. You're not going to not be nervous. Anymore. Right. I mean, I take I take that on stage when I do stand-up because <clears throat> uh, stand-up and music are, are uniquely similar because mm -hmm. you're right in front of the group. And no matter what you can put on track or, or record or anything, mm -hmm. that intimacy that you have on stage, you have to have those nerves. Right. And if you think you're just cocky, you're going to fail. Right. So that nervousness needs to be there. Yeah. You need to be kind of shit in your pants. Yeah. You got to humble yourself. Yeah. You got to humble yourself in a big, bad way. Yeah. Because yeah. not everybody is funny. <laughs> nah, right, yeah. And it takes a real hard time and to realize not everybody's as good as they think they are in music, you know. A hundred percent. I always find out that uh any any artist that and I'm not talking shit about anybody, anybody that is the type of person that are like, Oh, I watch my music every day. I well, listen to my shit every day. I can understand that if you're if you're critiquing yourself. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that, but if you're like, but if you're doing it and you're dude, like, listen to this shit. fine ass yeah. track right here, bruh. Right, right. I'm all like, all right, this is gonna be trash. This right. might be this might be trash. Right. This might be trash. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it sounds like having friends in your band and finding people you go with make a good band. That shit's important to me. That very important, yeah. right? Yeah, because if I'm not having a good time, what the fuck am I doing? Right. <laughs> and then with Decade of Flies, that's all your homies. Yeah. So when that was started, I mean, think about all your bands. When you really think about it, yeah, all, nobody's here, Bows. All have been my friends. Yeah, all have been your friends. Mm -hmm. Bloodline Calligraphy, mm -hmm. Friction, mm -hmm. all those guys, all your friends. Yep. Lawless Carver, all your friends. Yep. What uh, made you attracted to Snafu? I got to meet all those guys throughout the years, and I love punk rock, and oh, they needed bro. a drummer, so I, I took the opportunity to join up with them. Yeah, you and the GOAT have introduced punk rock really to me. Not only have you guys introduced metal, but you guys definitely introduced punk rock to me. Still something I'm learning a, a great appreciation over. I mean, you guys introduced me to Gigi Allen and all these guys that yeah, are yeah. like set the uh, the foundation. When I see Snafu, it's like a... That's more thrash punk, but... Yeah, I mean, my alley, you know? that is fucking up there, man. Oh, what a speaking great... Speaking Snafu, they're just coming out with a new record. Yeah? Yeah. And you, you're you still in the... No, I'm no? not I'm not on it, but they're my boys. And you're I wanna, showing I wanna, respect. I wanna, I wanna Fuck yeah, dude. Put that out there. That Hell yeah, dude. coming out with a new record. That's in, fucking in sick. In March? Yeah. Do, you know, do we know the name of that album yet? Uh, we all look at the I, goat. Uh, huh? Huh, off camera guy? Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, I feel all I know is a Snafu album is coming out, and that's all that fucking matters, man. That yeah. that that I did Game Chance in one of their songs, man. That was some of the funnest times oh, yeah, I had. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was it was a great time just being around that much talent in a room, <laughs> and like even some of the guys in the Game Chant are well seasoned musicians. And here's this nobody dude trying to do a podcast. <laughs> like I love it, <laughs> yeah. but uh. I did one record with those guys, and I had to stop touring because I had to go to the hospital. Right, so, right, right. You had your complications. What yeah. was it like touring with Snafu? Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. I mean, you're it the was, fucking. It was. It was back to the the rough, roughing it kind of. Yeah, like 
Is yeah. it back are we in the gonna, van? Are we going to get paid? Or, you know, oh, okay, is anybody okay. Gonna show up? Or are we going to, like, we're sleeping in the van tonight kind of shit, you know? Tony was on a couple of them with us. Yeah, that's <laughs> what's up. That's what's up, man. Yeah. You guys you guys went on tour, and, uh, I mean, like, dude, I, I, I loved it. I was, I'm you're the tour shit. vet at this point. Like, yeah. You've got more tour. Yeah, but I got spoiled there for a while in Bloodlines, so. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> talk about Bloodlines tours versus Snafu's tour. Grinding it versus, it sounds like, it, I mean, I don't want to, you know. Oh, it wasn't like, it wasn't like we didn't grind Bloodlines. you know what I'm saying? But, but we had hotels more often and fucking. Not sleeping in the van. <laughs> I mean, if we did sleep in the van, it was comfortable and there was a, you know, trailer that had all our shit in it, not the back of the van, you know. Right, so, right. Where is it like. We crammed in, yeah. you know. The gears in the back, and you got a bench to sleep on with another yeah. dude. <laughs> or, or, I'm, or I'm trying to like make sure that the cabinets are lined up flat so I can get up there and fucking sleep on those. So like bloodline, you had money to go to restaurants and have food and sure snap food. Well, you were making sandwiches at the gas station. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's I mean, dude. Like the, the fact that we can only tap into a, a, a bit of this while we do this podcast. Uh, I wanted to bring up one of my favorite shows you've been a part of, and that was uh, the Ipsy Metal Heavyweights at the Old oh. Woodruffs. Yeah. I'm talking about an all-star fucking amazing show. That was the first time we played back in Ipsy after yeah. uh, uh, Eric had passed away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The comeback, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, was that was fucking so brutal. Like 400 people showed up to that. Bodies were flying everywhere stage diving, man. It was a fucking amazing gig, man. It was a real hardcore show. Yeah. I mean, I, if I'm not mistaken, other than a couple of artists, I think everybody on Interbrews was stage diving that night. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, good majority of Hell our yeah. guests were definitely there. Hell yeah. Um, so we were sitting here talking, and uh, I remember last that night. Was, that's actually one of my favorite shows, to be honest. I mean, it is. It is. I mean, the lineup was great. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't get better than that lineup. The energy in that, at that show was fucking. The love was, was by like, far anywhere. Was I think I went through three different shirts, sweating my balls off, <laughs> yeah. kicked in the face, thrown in the air. Hell yeah. I jumped on uh, Mike Zunig just because, like, he was the biggest dude that I thought he'd catch me. <laughs> and he just, like, moved out of the way, and I dropped like a sack of potatoes. Like, it was a great fucking, great fucking time. Hell, yeah, it was. And the powerful wood drifts at the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then after um, that, I mean, you, you were in Snafu, touring. Yeah. What about, there's a story that you brought up. <clears throat> about meeting Pimp C. Oh yeah, fucking Burger King in Texas. We met, <laughs> we met Pimp C, and he he actually put his phone number into my uh, phone. He had the iPhone before it even came out, and we traded CDs with him. He talked with us and everything. Fucking, that was wild. And uh, he was there because his Bentley had a flat, and our drummer <laughs> drummer said, "Hey man, that's a nice ride." And he was like, he he said to him, he's like, "You want it? It's got a flat." We were like. What the fuck? <laughs> a flat tire? You be selling these yeah. cars? But he fucking indulged us for a little bit, and he actually gave me his phone number, and we gave him our contact, and he had his assistant go out to the trunk and give us the new UGK that wasn't even out yet. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was fucking tight. Yeah, dude, I remember you talking about it because he, he was like, I met Pim C in a bath, Burger King bathroom <laughs> oh, it with, was a it? Bo- it, with a bottle of yeah, Windex yeah, sterilizing bottom, the motherfucker. Yeah. I was like, yeah, the dude next to me. The like, craziest was, ass story I've ever heard. I swear to God, man. It was fucking, <laughs> <laughs> he was in there with a bottle of fucking windshield cleaner just fucking pouring it everywhere. That's and insane. I was, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and he's all he's dressed in a full cranberry Carhartt hookup, you know, or, or with Dickie's hookup. Yeah. He mashes his fucking car. It was wild. <laughs> That's so fucking insane. What a wild fucking story. So when are we going to see Ryan Hampton in another band, buddy? Mm, I don't know, man. I, I, I want you on the ones and twos again, man. You're, you're so talented and fucking powerful and have all this fucking experience. Oh, you should definitely you. be managing a band if you're not fucking playing in one. Oh, dude, bands drive me fucking nuts, man. I'm telling you, it's another relationship. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Man, there's a lot. There's it's a lot, lot of personalities lot. to deal with in a band, man. 
For sure. <laughs> what goes into being uh Me and Sean are trying to do something, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We've been trying to do something, but he lives on the other side of the fucking planet, pretty much. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. What, uh, what, so being the, uh, the tour bus champion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what goes into doing the perfect tour? Ooh, uh, management and booking agent. Making sure. Contracts and guarantees. Yeah. <laughs> sure things. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Right, <laughs> so we usually close all these bad boys out with the sex, drugs, and rock and roll question. Now you can either talk about your first sexual experience, <laughs> you can talk about your worst drug experience, or you can talk about your most rock star moment. I'll talk about my most rock star moment. Um, oh, right on. I was probably playing the whiskey a go go. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Sunset Strip in Hollywood and being in the same dressing room as Motley Crue and all those fucking bands. I mean, movies. a legendary video. And, and Cart trying to break a bottle on the wall and it just wouldn't fucking break. <laughs> Dude, bottles are durable as fuck. I love oh, this Oh, and I, also that night fucking... Shit, I can't remember the name now. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, oh, yeah, Suicide Silence opened for us on that night. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. I swear to God, yeah. Suicide they actually Silence. had to sell tickets to play that show. And you guys just like walked up on fucking stage. Dude, well, what our a... name was on the billboard, dude. It was our tour. On the marquee and yeah, everything. Yeah. And this got to be a bloodline. This is bloodline, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, but this is like, granted, this is like when Suicide Silence was just starting out. And the next year, they were the biggest fucking name in metal. Gigantic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Weird how things are, you know. Yeah, it's fucking weird. It's <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. Dude, I did not know that. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Dude, I'm so glad that you came back on here and we got to run through this again. Oh, yeah. You're such a fucking treasure, Ypsilanti. <laughs> I, I love you to death. I love you too, brother. Everybody, thank you guys for watching. Dude, look up all these fucking bands that we just talked about. These are literally the history of Ipsy Metal. Watch them. Like them. Watch this. Subscribe. Like. Share. Comment. Tell me if you hate it. Tell me if you like it. Whatever, buddy. But be safe out there, everybody. Love y'all.